This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, doing some beginning machine knitting lessons. And this lesson in particular is a very good lesson if you're a hand knitter. Because I'm going to show how to do a horizontal seam. This would be a virtually invisible seam running this way with two pieces of knitting. I have this brick color as my main garment yarn on the sample, and the cream color is waist yarn that I'm going to discard. Now normally if I were going to do this seam, I would use the matching yarn to do the stitching. However, to make it a little easier to see, I'm going to thread my tapestry needle with a contrasting yarn. So I have some blue yarn here that I'll do the seam with. I like to do the Kitchener stitch seam from the wrong side. So let me flip these over so that you can see the wrong side of the knitting. And in addition to flipping them over, I'm going to tur turn the scrap yarn under so that the last row of stitches is very visible. You can see these individual brick colored loops coming out above the last row of the cream colored loops. And I would begin by going from the wrong side to the right side through the, through the first loop at the end of a row. And then I go from the wrong side to the right side, or excuse me, I go from the right side to the wrong side. I go this way. So I've gone in a straight line with these two samples matched up this way to make the first stitch. The second stitch, I'm going to go in this, in this sample through the second loop, in other words, the next unused loop, and then go back through the first loop on this on this one, and it's a, a loop I've already used. It already has blue yarn in it. I do recommend that when you practice, try it the first time with some contrasting yarn. Now you don't pull this really tight like you would if you were hand sewing. This is going to be very much like a row of knitting being put in. So that's the amount of tightness that you want. And you can achieve an invisible seam with a little bit of practice. So there's the, the next stitch. I go from a new stitch beside the one I just came out of into the last stitch I used on the other side. New stitch, use stitch. New stitch, use stitch. Adjust the tension a little. New stitch, use stitch. New stitch, use stitch. Now I have this spread out on a table for maximum visibility. But in real life, this isn't the way that I hold the knitting when I do Kitchener stitch. So let me show you how I normally would hold the knitting to do Kitchener stitch. I'd hold it like this. New stitch, new stitch. I'm left-handed. I am doing my Kitchener stitch from left to right. If I were right-handed, I would do the Kitchener stitch from right to left. Now I'm going to turn it and do a little, a little distance as a right-handed person. So since I came out here, my next stitch is here. So I'm going to go new stitch and then old stitch on the opposite side. New stitch, old stitch, new stitch, old stitch, new stitch, U stitch. This is also called weaving the two pieces of knitting together, and it's very frequently called grafting the two pieces of knitting together. But the most common name for this is Kitchener stitch 
which is spelled K-I-T-C-H-E-N-E-R, Kitchen-er, and it is, it is a beautiful seam, and it's one of the two basic seams that you really must know as a beginning knitter, so that when people look at the things you knitted, they won't know you're a beginner. They'll think that you do beautiful, beautiful finishing work, which is key to having your things turn out well. And one of the most critically judged things, if you go to any kind of a judge show. Now I recommend that you practice this. You can use a contrasting yarn. The first time you practice it, maybe you'd like to practice this using exactly the same yarn the second time and see if you can get this to look completely invisible. Now I'm going to do one other thing while I'm doing this. I'm going to pick up the next stitch and I am going to go out to the right side of the yarn because this can also be done from the right side. I'm going to cut this waste yarn away so that I can fold it under and show the technique. I virtually always do this from the wrong side, but I just want you to know that it can be done from the right side. In fact, I first learned it doing it from the right side, and I think being on the right side and being able to see the length of the individual little stitches gave me an opportunity to learn to get my tension just beautiful on this. See, I'm going into the V of a stitch, and then I'm coming out the middle of a V of the next stitch, and then I'm going to the other side, in where I came out, and going under two threads. So this is what it looks like to do this from the right side. Of course, turn it around, do it right-handed for you. I'm going to go in here and come out here. And I'm at the end. I've got one more stitch to go in. Now, let me get the scrap yarn off so that you can see what I have. Since I cut it, it's going to come off in little pieces. The needle would be good for grabbing these. Then on the other side, since I cut it, I'm going to have to take it off in pieces there too. There's one piece of scrap yarn removed. Let me get the other one. This is what the, the seam looks like from the right side. And you could see that if this was a matching color, it would blend in. It would be an invisible seam. And this is what the seam looks like from the wrong side. Again, kitchener stitch or grafting the knitting.